the Bruiserweight has joined SmackDown Live! What is Michaels doing here? Why is he attacking Sheamus of all people? Michaels wants to mentor him, be his manager, teach him the ins and outs. And if he is by the side of Riddle, then the sky is the limit. And Riddle is absolutely on board. He is sending out an open invitation. Who has the balls to stand with him against the Dangerous Alliance? Samoa Joe is challenging Brock Lesnar for the WWE title at Extreme Rules. The WWE Champion is here. The fight is on. Here we go, everyone. They're gonna fight in the crowd, but they're gonna fight next Sunday for the WWE title at Extreme Rules. Hello and welcome Universe Mode, this is Smackdown Live. We are just removed of course from Guilty as Charged. We haven't even got to the fallout on ECW. But we are all focused on Extreme Rules this Sunday. Corin versus Kazuchika Okada one last time. And the career of the Rainmaker on the line. It's only apt that we prepare for that show by being in the most famous arena in the world, Madison Square Garden. With a big show on its way for you here tonight. The first match of the evening. Two matches set for Extreme Rules. AJ Styles will fight Dean Ambrose. Finn Balor gets his rematch against Kofi Kingston for the Intercontinental title. They'll meet in a tag match here tonight. That one is going to be a huge way to kick things off the show. But to end the show, the man who will face Brock Lesnar for the WWE title at Extreme Rules, Samoa Joe, goes one-on-one -on -one against the DCC's Baron Corbin. A true horse fight, a true brawl coming our way in the main event this evening. Plenty to get to on this evening at SmackDown Live, but we're going to start things off with the general manager, Christian James, who I know has some big news to drop regarding Extreme Rules. There have been questions asked over what the kind of matches will be like at Extreme Rules. Christian James has told me that he's going to plan on clearing the air about that here tonight to kick things off on SmackDown Live. And I mean, he might as well, because probably from this moment on, the show's going to be abstract chaos. So I might as well try and get it out of the way as soon as possible. And welcome us to this episode of Universe to SmackDown Live and, of course, Talking about the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. Everything is going to be on the line. Everything goes and rules go out the window with them. And it's going to be a very personal evening for everyone. And I cannot wait for it as well. I think we all agree that some of these matches that we know are taking place are going to be huge. So, I just want to know what he's got in store for us at the event itself. And of course it is time to reveal what type of matches everyone's got themselves into. First things first, AJ Styles and Dean Ambrose are going to do battle in a tables match. That is very interesting news indeed. These two guys who've been personal with one another now for the last two months will settle their business in a table match. Whoever puts the other through a table will be the winner. Styles and Ambrose are going to be kicking things off at Extreme Rules. That is going to be a very fun Entertaining match indeed, just like they're kicking things off here tonight. Moving on from that, it's the WWE Tag Team Titles. The Gorillas of Destiny against the, the American Show-Offs in a ladder match. That one's going to be great as well. Then, Nikki Cross against Ruby Riot in a no disqualification match. And with all the bad blood that's brewed between those two sides, that's going to be a very, very interesting contest indeed. Is that three matches we've gone through, I think. The Dangerous Alliance, Matt Riddle and his mystery partner meet in a tornado tag match. Kofi Kingston defends the Intercontinental title against Finn Balor in a Falls Can Anyway match. Brock Lesnar defends his WWE title against Samoa Joe in a straight one-on-one -on -one match. Because let's be honest, it probably works. It's the only match that just works because it's going to turn into a fight no matter what. But of course... The main event of the evening. The one that we're all focused on. Corin Kazuchika Okada. One last time. Extreme rules. Okada's career on the line. The chance for revenge is there. But his career could go as well. And that is everything from the SmackDown general manager. That is all the big news. And now we await the rest of this show. Christian James dropping big match types there. Six matches with some kind of no disqualification element to them. And Lesnar versus Joe, which is just going to be a straight fight from start to finish for the WWE title. I can't wait for this Sunday. 
And here we go right now, kicking things off. The Originals against Dean Ambrose and Kofi Kingston. AJ Styles and Finn Balor. Is this the first time these two guys have teamed together? I believe it might well be. Styles with a victory over Kofi Kingston two weeks ago, thanks in large part to the assault by uh, Finn Balor. Well, thanks in every part by the assault on Finn Balor. I've heard that even though two weeks have passed, Kofi Kingston not at 100% after that attack. I mean, two bloody Sundays on the outside and a Styles and two Styles clashes in the ring are probably going to do their damage on you. Physically, it wouldn't surprise me if Kofi's dealing with a concussion of some sort, but he wants to fight on, he wants to fight tonight, and he wants to fight this Sunday to try and defend the Intercontinental title. Falls can anywhere against Bala. And I wonder what that means. I wonder how much the originals will want to get involved. Styles knows his fate. A tables match with Dean Ambrose. That one's also going to be pretty damn interesting. But so too is this opening match of the evening. Farley at ringside. Alongside Balor and Styles. And I wonder. If, well, he uh, probably will be a difference maker in this matchup. Let's be real. And I wonder if you'll try and get under this man's skin as he has done for so many months. Dean Ambrose heading towards the ring first. And I bet he is happy with the uh, news that he has heard just a moment ago that he gets his hands. And AJ Styles in a tables match. He gets to put that man through a table. And it is it can be sweet, sweet revenge for the betrayal that was played by AJ Styles all the way back at Fully Loaded in December. Ambrose has spent the better part now of about four months, five months involved with the originals in some way. Be it Farley or, or, or uh, Bala or Styles now. He's worked his way through almost everyone at this point. But he gets his hands on the man who dealt the most personal blow to him this Sunday in AJ Styles. And I am looking forward to seeing how that one goes. And I'm sure that the next man to come out, the Intercontinental Champion himself, is looking forward to how things will go as well. Injured or not, hurting or not, he knows he's got to retain that title. He knows he's got to do his best to try and hold on to it. Kofi Kingston, Finn Balor. Falls can anyway. And that definitely plays into the advantage of the, Intercont of the uh, former Intercontinental Champion of Finn Balor. He definitely will be pleased with that one. As for now though, Kofi Kingston has to focus on this tag match. Has to focus on making sure that he's anywhere near 100%. That he can get something under his belt. That he can get a victory here tonight. I mean, since becoming the Intercontinental Champion, all we've seen is him was when he got blindsided by Bala and Styles. Can't be any blindsiding in this match, though. Straight tag team match, and it's going to be the two guys who will meet in the opener of Extreme Rules to start things off this evening. Ambrose and Styles locking horns. So let's see what these two rivals will do as we kick things off here. Of course, this is going to be this whole match is going to be filled with rivalries for. Pretty much everyone involved. Kofi's going to want revenge on Styles for the cheap shot on him two weeks ago. Um, Ambrose, well, he hates both of them, and they hate both, and they and both of them hate him as well. So that is pretty fair uh, game right there. Of course, Balor is going to want his crack at Kofi as well. It's definitely all all to play for here between these guys. There is. No denying that as Ambrose gets the early going here. Chin lock applied on AJ Styles. Wonder if bad luck Farley will get involved on the outside as, uh, as this match goes on. Of course, we know these two guys are going to be meeting in a tables match this Sunday. It'll be a very, very interesting evening. Can't wait for it. In the turnbuckle we go. Tag made. Former Intercontinental Champion. Legal man. Jim and suplex from Balor as well onto an old rival in Dean Ambrose. Counter from the Lunatic Fringe there into the Texas Cloverleaf. Nicely done. Can Balor get himself out of this one? Trying to crawl to the ropes here. Nice little roll through there and a drop kick. Say what you will about the originals and trust me, I have plenty to say about their actions. They are incredibly talented and gifted athletes. Three world champions occupy this ring and the only one who doesn't is the current Intercontinental Champion, Kofi Kingston. 
He has come close to winning a world title more than once in his career, though. In this universe. Big sling blade there as these two guys, of course, meeting in their false count anywhere about this... Uh, Sunday as well, a rematch from the Royal Rumble. Kingston looking to keep that surprise factor going, looking to keep that Intercontinental title right around his waist. Jawbreaker there by Bala. Into the turnbuckle we go. Counters made. Look at that. Back and forth counters from both sides there. Bala ducks under. Pele kick. And I think Kingston is still showing signs of that injury from, from two weeks ago. Still showing signs of that beatdown. He's not quick. He's not moving around at a fast pace. He does have some wear and tear to him. There's no doubt about that. He's not moving at what I'd call a traditional Kofi Kingston pace. He's not speeding around the ring. He's not jumping from pillar to post. And with a tag made it to Dean Ambrose. Here we go again between Ambrose and Styles. That was great work there by Styles. Who timed that perfectly, read the situation, and clocked in with a big drop kick. Forearm in the face from Ambrose. And here we go now, the Lunatic Fridge down to get fired up, clock from behind though. By Finn Balor, and a power bomb will down. The former WWE Champion. For the first time this has been for Styles and, and uh, Balor teaming together, they're working pretty well with one another against a common enemy in Dean Ambrose. Ambrose might have been thinking about making the tag to Kofi, but... He wasn't there in time, so a second rope bulldog will help take care of things. Ambrose definitely going to try to take care of things. He's looking to strike with duty deeds right now. Will he get it? Yeah, no. Styles denies it. Shuts the door. Pele kick, and Ambrose goes down. And look at how cocky AJ Styles feels about that one. I got to say, the originals have been handing this match pretty safely. They have been taking care of this thing. Pretty fine. In the turnbuckle we go. Tag made. Kingston the legal man here. Right into the boot. Goes AJ Styles' his face. Balor trying to get the tag in. But Kofi as if to say no chance. Stuck in the ring now. Is the phenomenal one. And Kofi Kingston perhaps a little bit more fired up after his slow start. Let's see what he can do now when he's given the opportunity to. Stop in the back there. Kofi Kingston lining things up. The boom drop. He got him with it. Crowd cheering on Kofi as well to try and get the win over Styles. Oh, he almost had him there. Two count off of that boom drop. Styles not looking at a good predicament right now. This could be it. Kofi lining it up. Trouble in paradise. Oh, Styles have faded it. And a flying lariat brings Kofi off his feet. AJ Styles now looking to work on the head that was hit. That was injured, and that is now being worked over even more by Styles. Ushigaroshi leads into the Styles Clash once again. The third time, but Ambrose is there to make the save. Balor couldn't stop him in time. Double elbow, though, from Finn Balor. And Ambrose is sent out of the ring as a result of it. Kofi is reeling. He doesn't know where he is right now. Phenomenal forearm. And that's going to take care of things here. Into the cover goes AJ Styles. The injured head of Kofi Kingston may well have just had his bells run even further. As AJ Styles and Finn Balor get the win. The originals victorious just a few days before Sunday. Just a few days before they challenge the duo in singles match before Finn Balor challenges for that Intercontinental title once again is it going to be glory though for the originals just like it was here tonight tables match balls can anywhere all to play for Balor seems to be given a big advantage though as the result of Kofi's perhaps head injury that he has sustained and that has been worsened by this matchup here this evening may be the case we're going to move on here though on Smackdown Live next contest coming up here Kofi uh, sorry Kota Ibushi going to go one on one against Bobby Fish a huge chance here for the Golden Stars he takes on the longest reigning WWE champion in the history of this universe think 
about the wins Kofi has sustained over these last few weeks. There was Shinsuke Nakamura. It was the big one. I believe there was one the week after that I seemed to have lost my mind over. I can't remember for the life of me right now off the top of my head who it was. And now, challenging Bobby Fish here. Sheamus, that was it. He beat Sheamus. And now he challenges Bobby Fish here. Ibushi getting a lot of wins under his belt right now. Getting a lot of interest, I think, from the SmackDown general manager. And this is perhaps the biggest interest you could get in terms of one of the most hated, most disgusting, vile, underhanded, backstabbing guys out there. Bobby Fish, who heads into this one alone. Paul Heyman not at ringside as he is looking over a game plan for the Dangerous Alliance at Extreme Rules. They are, of course, going to be facing Matt Riddle and whoever decides to stand alongside Riddle in a Tornado Tag Team matchup, as we found out. But, of course, we don't know who the tag team partner for Riddle is. So what I imagine Heyman's doing is he's going to the drawing board. He's looking at people who could be who could be alongside Matt Riddle in that match, and he's frantically drawing up plans. He's frantically thinking, what can I do to ensure a dangerous alliance victory? And Heyman can always do that, that's the thing. He always has that capability within him. And I think he has, and, and to be fair, he has every right reason as well to have high, high Confidence in Fish. At the end of the day, 390 days as WWE Champion now. Still the second longest reign in the history of this universe. Still the longest reigning WWE Champion. Whatever Brock Lesnar's reign, I believe Lesnar is second now. But I don't even think he's halfway to Fish's record. And look at that! Reading there from the three-time WWE Champion. Uh, Ibushi came running in. Fish just had him. Picked out in the blink of an eye. Got the legs uh, trapped around, the legs locked around the head of Ibushi. They're just controlling him in the early goings. I do not like Bobby Fish, but I cannot argue with the fact that he is a damn good wrestler. Triple crown champion in this universe. Still holds the record for the longest reigning intercontinental title reign in this universe as well. Unless I am mistaken, which I don't believe I am. Lovely dragon suplex to Ibushi there. Fish coming out of the gate swinging. Trying to send his message to Matt Riddle, it would seem. Lovely running neither from Ibushi, who's thinking about what a win over a third world champion. And the, I hate to say it, but it's kind of true, the greatest WWE champion this universe has ever seen. Imagine what a win would do for Ibushi. Where would that catapult him to? Coming out of Extreme Rules. Lovely corner in Zaguri there. Beautiful moonsault from Ibushi as well, but he decides not to go for the cover. Golden Star still got plenty left in him, though. This match has barely begun in his eyes. And Fish is well aware of that. Back suplex shit. Wait a minute. Shin breaker into the back suplex. Double whammy there from Bobby Fish. He knows exactly what he's doing. Kick in the leg, running kick right into that chest. Ibushi going to have the wind knocked out of him. That is a hefty blow to take, and here we go. Now explode a suplex into the turnbuckle. Look at the aggression with which Bobby Fish is operating in this match. Look at how out of the gate he is and how just in... Ibushi's face he is as well. Oh my goodness. Spinning kick from Fish. And I wonder if he'll drag him to the middle of the ring now to look to try and set up the fish hook. Fish in total control here. Stomping away on Ibushi. Whoa, wait a minute. That is the team of Rizzo. And Fish jumped on it like a lightning bolt. Distracting himself by Riddle's theme. Ibushi stealing a backslide. 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 The Golden Star steals one. 
And Bushi beats Fish. Giving assistance to Matt Riddle, yes. But that is Riddle getting under the skin of the three-time WWE Champion before they clash. At Extreme Rules, Ibushi, oh, whoa, 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 cut the, cut the celebration short. A prick just came through the crowd. Are you kidding me? Fish ran for the hills. Ibushi walking up the ramp, core in his year. And apparently he couldn't wait to deliver the eulogy for the Rainmaker. Apparently tonight is the night we remember Kazuchika Okada as he will prepare to be laid to rest. We are to remember the Rainmaker for all that made him great. What the? He just stormed into SmackDown Live to deliver this message. Corin says that the Rainmaker was an admirable fighter. He was something for everyone to remember. But there was an evil inside him that he could never beat. Corin believes his words, wow, his own words couldn't do enough justice. Fucking hell, I wish you'd shut up all the time. But it seems as if we need to see what it is that Corin is talking about. He's got something that he wants us to see, doesn't he? And I think I know what it's all about as well. Yep. It's a recap of everything that he's done to Okada over these last few months. From invading the main event of Survivor Series to putting Okada through the table in the same breath to the victory at Fully Loaded in their unsanctioned match and the most devastating and recent blow of them all. The elimination at the Royal Rumble. As Okada has deteriorated, Corin has soared on the back of it. There is the downfall of the Rainmaker that Corrin wanted to bring up. In Corrin's eyes, he killed the Rainmaker. He is the reason why Okada looks like he is. And he is the reason there is no Rainmaker. But after Extreme Rules, there's no Okada. Corrin has proven he, Okada can't beat him. He is the evil inside him. He's killed the Rainmaker once. He has no problem killing the Kar Yes! Okada! That's the... Oh, wait a minute. This is all some kind of joke, isn't it? Some kind of sick joke by Corin. Oh look, it's the Rainmaker. This is the Rainmaker of Okada. The Rainmaker persona, the Rainmaker attire, the blonde hair. And Corin's just jumped the poor kid. Forcing the robe off of him. And just assaulting him in the ring. This is a visual representation in Corin's eyes of him killing the Rainmaker. This is what he believes has come true. This, he believes, is his own creation. Clock strikes 12. And as he rolls the poor kid out of the ring, the microphone goes back to him. And that was him killing the Rainmaker. That was him putting him out once and for all. That was him telling the final tale of the story of Kazuchika Okada. He's ended the Rainmaker. Now he ends him this Sunday and he says it again he will miss his friend but it's time for the rain killer to deliver the final blow this Sunday Corin is psychotic with the thought of ending the career of Okada oh wait a minute he's just pulled the he just pulled him back in the ring and Corin's going right after him he's going to, yes there's Okada Okada making the save! The Rainmaker couldn't stand by no longer! Out of the ring goes Corin! Okada face to face! With the guy who dressed up as him! And Okada sending a message! This isn't about the Rainmaker! This cheap ploy doesn't work! This is Okada! Almost committing gimmick suicide. This is Okada saying the Rainmaker is null. And as Corin runs for the hills, as Corin now is the one with the tail between his legs, Okada has the mic. And Corin's watching on a long way away. And Corin set and Okada says he doesn't need the Rainmaker to beat Corin. He will do everything he can 
to kill the evil inside him. He has to end this once and for all. There is no Rainmaker to this anymore. In Okada's eyes, this stopped being about the Rainmaker a long time ago. And he is exactly right. As Okada puts it, this isn't about the Rainmaker against the Rain Killer. This is Kazuchika Okada against Corrin. This isn't about rivalries. This isn't about a spat. This is personal. This is Okada versus Corrin. This is Extreme Rules. He will kill the noise of the Rainmaker. And one final message. He hates that son of a bitch. Try and get under his skin as you might. The ploys won't work. Okada risks it all this Sunday. And he has no problem putting everything on the line. Okada is brave. Okada will not be backing down. Okada is standing tall in what could be his final stand this Sunday. The mind games from Corin don't work no more. As Okada put it, this is not Rainmaker versus Rainkiller. This is Okada versus Corin. And that comes in the main event of Extreme Rules this Sunday for what could very well be the very last time. It is Kazuchika Okada versus Corin with Okada's career on the line. I do not, I don't know what I can, outside of don't miss Extreme Rules, I don't know what more I can say. Do you need any more convincing that you need to watch Extreme Rules at this point? Look how personal this has got between these two guys now. I didn't think it could get any more personal after Survivor Series or after Fully Loaded, but it has. It's eclipsed into a whole new level, but its end comes this Sunday. Which way will it end? We'll find out. As for now, we move on here to our next match here on, the, on uh, SmackDown Live. Tama Tonga gonna go one on one against Dolph Ziggler. Last week, Tangaloa successfully defeated Dolph Ziggler in one on one action. And now it is the turn of Tama Tonga to take on Dolph Ziggler. This crowd a little bit shaken up by what they just saw and every reason for it as well. Every trick in the book that Corin could think of, he did. Going through all that extent to dress some some random guy up as Okada just to beat him up, just to try and send a visual representation that he killed the Rainmaker. Honestly, who cares? Who cares about that? When it comes to Okada versus Corin, I don't think Rainmaker versus Rainkiller. Ever since their clashes for the NXT title came about in November 2017, it was Okada versus Corin. It had eclipsed the ideas of both guys. It had eclipsed being a rivalry. It was a blood feud. And now these two great names, these two huge stars within this universe clash one more time. Please, Okada. If you took the risk of putting your career on the line, please, please win. I'm not saying that as a general manager who's hoping to secure you in the draft. I'm not saying that as, as, a, as a hater of Corin. I'm saying that as a fan. Please win. I'm saying that to you person to person. Please win. Shut up, Corin. Kill that noise. Put the rain killer to bed. Be Kazuchika Okada. Be the man who conquered the odds and won the Royal Rumble. Be the man who won in the main event of WrestleMania. Be the man we know you are. Please win this Sunday. I'll leave it there for talking about that. The main event is something that we just cannot afford to miss. So much, so much on the line. All right, let's focus back on this match right here, though. 
Three-time world champion Dolph Ziggler versus current WWE Tag Team Champion Tama Tonga. Nice back suplex attempt. Great landing by Ziggler. Up and over to the outside. There's Tama Tonga there. Heavy landing. Of course, Tangaloa beat the former world champion in Cody Rhodes as well last week. If uh, Tama Tonga beat Ziggler here tonight in singles action, beating guys with, collect with a collective four world titles between them. Pretty big achievement for one. And then for two... Imagine what kind of advantage that would give you heading into this Sunday. That ladder match. For the tag team titles. Gorillas of Destiny have retained their titles in a steel cage match before. But never a ladder match. Matter of fact, I don't know when the last time a tag team title match was a ladder match. I don't even know if there was one. Famous are there by Ziggler. That struck out of the blue. Tama Tonga could be in trouble here. Cody willing him on on the outside. Tama Tonga though. He gets the counter in. Went for something from behind. Goes up and over the top rope here. Ziggler looking to strike big. Good forearm in the face from Tama Tonga. Gets back in the ring here. Oh, Gunstun! Gunstun connects from Tama Tonga. But oh, there's Cody. There is Cody to be the difference maker. But Tama Tonga staying. On the money. The bad boy is not letting up here. Tama Tonga is ruthless right now on Ziggler. But so too can Ziggler be on him. Tama Tonga stops him in his tracks though. Kicking the gut. Another Alabama slam. Taking Cody's signature move. One of Cody's signature moves. And just hitting it against his partner. Tangaloa did the same last week as well. I think he finished Cody with an Alabama slam. Wrenching on the, the neck. Ziggler now twisting it, tweaking it, talking it. In a way that it's not meant to go. Leaping DDT. A signature move of Ziggler. The originals have really been reading up on their opponents. Ahead of this ladder match. They've been reading up. Gunstun on Ziggler. And is Tama Tonga about to beat a three-time world champion? Yes, he is. And he did it with ease. Tama Tonga, your winner. But with the stipulation that we found out last, no, la, well, pretty much at the last hour regarding the ladder match, how much of a difference do pinfall, match, pinfall victories really make? The Gorillas of Destiny have two victories, yes. But they're two victories in singles matches by way of pinfall. That is a completely different boat. To a ladder match. That's going to be a big one this Sunday, though. No doubt about it. Is that opening the show, I believe? No, it's the second match, maybe. That one's going to be great. But it's time to move on here. Nikki Cross is in action up next. Though I don't know against whom. And she prepares for her match against Ruby Riot. We saw last week on SmackDown Live after her victory over Liv Morgan. But the victory itself was essentially short-lived. The Riot squad came from behind and KO'd her basically. Jumped her after the match. And with a three-on-one disadvantage, even Nikki Cross, as psychotic as she is, couldn't find a way to overcome that. Cross... Has a win over Liv Morgan, but of course suffered a defeat to Nikki Cross a few weeks. Uh, sorry, to Ruby Riot a few weeks back. Hence why we have this title match coming up this Sunday. No disqualification between the two. And I have to say, if that is the case, then why wouldn't it just be another three-on-one handicap match? Why, if it's an ODQ with the Riot Squad, not just run into the ring from the opening bell, jump Nikki Cross, and give Ruby Riot that title? There's no reason why they shouldn't. If there, if there are no rules there, and if you can bend them, twist them, break them to your heart's content, why wouldn't you? That's, that's the way I look at it. Cross did say to the SmackDown general manager that she had something she wanted to talk about here this evening. Something that she wanted to discuss before Extreme Rules. Now, I can only speculate as much as the rest of you. I'm not too sure what... Uh, what she means by that. But what I do know is that Cross is ready for this one. Whatever it is, 
Cross is probably ready for another kind of altercation with a riot squad as well. It wouldn't surprise me. Nikki Cross is always ready for a fight, though. She's always ready. She's always ready to play. And now we await to see what it is the SmackDown Women's Champion has to discuss here. As she gets rid of the belt, she takes the mic. Cross has something to say right here, right now. And it is about the Riot Squad. She wants them banned from ringside for the match at Extreme Rules. She says they're maniacs. They're a pack of wolves. They attack everyone as a gang. They make it three on one any time that they can. And if that's the case, then Nikki doesn't want to play at Extreme Rules. And I know what she's on about because if she did, like I just said, she'd lose the title. So she has a challenge. She wants to face Morgan and Logan right now in a handicap match. If, if she gets the win, then they are banned from ringside at Extreme Rules. If Nikki loses, then she will be fighting the Wolves come Sunday. That is one big challenge made by Cross right then and there. And she is calling them out. She is saying that they have what it takes to face her here tonight. Are they willing to be risk to risk being banned for a chance to get their hands on it before she kicks the ass of Ruby Riot on Sunday. Nikki Cross is telling them not to be scared. I mean, have you seen Nikki Cross? She is saying though that Ruby's not allowed at ringside. She's not allowed to play this in this play pit. Them three are going to have some fun. She's not leaving until she gets an answer. And if they don't, she'll go backstage and she will smash their heads into a locker until she gets bored. She wants to play right here, right now. Will Nikki Cross get her wish? She stands in the ring and she waits. And that tells the story. That's the theme of the Riot Squad, but that is just Liv Morgan. The woman who lost to Nikki Cross last week. Is there maybe some skepticism in the Riot Squad right now? Is there maybe some doubt over the fact that both of them want to go at this? Seems if Morgan is more than happy to throw herself in. She's more than happy to throw herself in at the deep end. Maybe she wants a chance at revenge for last week. But no Ruby Riot at ringside could be a big difference maker. Morgan is in the ring though. Will Logan join her? Is this going to be the handicap match the Cross wants? There's the theme again. I think that would say yes. And it does. Logan will work alongside her. Nikki Cross will get her wish. Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan with no Ruby Riot at ringside are going to face Nikki Cross right here, right now on SmackDown Live. Cross putting herself in a big scenario here. Putting herself in a risky scenario as well, I must say. A handicap match. If the Riot Squad win, it's three on one come Sunday. In a, in a no DQ match, so it's basically a three on one handicap. But if Cross gets that win, she can pull that off right here tonight. Ruby Riot might all of a sudden be biting her nails down to the very, very bottom. The nerves of squaring off against Nikki Cross after everything she's done with her Riot Squad over these last few weeks may all be for nothing. Liv Morgan will start this one off. It seems if we're going to work in a tag team tandem here between these two, which I would say assists Cross more. She doesn't have to contend with both of them at the same time. She doesn't have to worry about the pair of them running at her simultaneously. I'd be fine with that. Big lariat up and over the top rope. There goes Liv Morgan and Nikki Cross feeling awfully confident about it. I mean, she has every reason to, but remember it was Nikki who wanted to play. It was Nikki who wanted this handicap match. And if she loses, how much could she regret it? Morgan dragging her here over to the other side of the turnbuckle. Is she going to make the tag into Sarah Logan right now? 
Yes, she is. Sarah Logan now hitting the ring. Last time we saw Logan in action was against the debuting Tegan Knox here on SmackDown Live. Knox was overthrown by the, uh, the numbers games. And could Ruby Riot, uh, sorry, could Nikki Cross be overthrown by the numbers games as well? And basically give Ruby Riot the SmackDown Women's Championship on a silver platter. That could very well be the case. There's no doubt about it, but right now Cross is doing everything in her power to make sure that it isn't. Working over the arm there is Sarah Logan. Trying to beat down the uh, taller woman, the brute basically of the uh, Riot squad. And turn buckle, went for a flying forearm. Cross might have tripped up a little bit there, not too certain. Sarah Logan might have not been affected by it, but she got affected by that kick. She stumbled to the outside there. Nikki Cross doesn't want to go on the outside. You know, I imagine she might love playing on the outside. Seems as if that it's not intriguing her as she works over the arm once more. Talking on it again. Has the arm drip. Big forearm in the face there by Sarah Logan and all. Oh, big running knee as well. We saw Logan's aggressiveness a few weeks back as well when she took out Naomi in the parking lot. Naomi's career in jeopardy following that. It was a, se it was a severe attack from Sarah Logan. So she's been picking up a mean streak to her over these last few weeks. Up and over and outside goes Nikki Cross. A lot of this match done to take place on the outside here all of a sudden. Referee starts his count now. Oh, running knee on the outside as well. And I'd imagine a count that would do the job as well for the... Uh, for the, for the uh, three-on-one desire that the Riot squad will have all of a sudden. Back in the ring we go here though. Big forearm in the face from Cross. She's hitting big with those forearms. She is fighting. Sarah Logan trying to do everything in her power to stop it here. Look at this. Flat power bomb. Great agility from Logan. But a kick out at one from Nikki Cross. If I was the Riot Squad, honestly, if I have the two on one advantage, I'm taking full advantage of it. I'm doing quick tags. Double team moves as frequently as I can. Running in. Being a difference maker. I'm doing all of that as. As quickly and as frantically as I can, there's no one to save Cross here. They have every reason to keep on going. So if the referee tries to count them up to five, just get out the ring. I'm not saying I commend it, but I'm saying if it's there, do it. If you want to help out your leader, if you want to make sure that Ruby Riot will walk out of Extreme Rules with, this, with the SmackDown Women's title, you should be willing to go to every risk imaginable. If you're a group who loves to bend the rules, then bend the rules. Bend the rules while they're awesome, because there won't be any come Sunday. And again, we go to the outside here. Cross definitely... I don't think she's intentionally, uh, intentionally sending them to the outside, but she keeps on fighting back here. Wait a minute. Nikki Cross, Fisherman Suplex, Neckbreaker. She caught... Lo uh, she caught Morgan with it. Logan sent to the outside. It's a cover made. Nikki Cross has done it. Cross has conquered the odds put against her. She wanted to play. She wanted to be at a disadvantage. And she got her wish. Nikki Cross will face... Ruby Riot this Sunday with the Riot Squad banned from ringside. Suddenly, things are far, far more even for the SmackDown Women's Champion heading into that big match between those two women come Sunday. Very interesting news indeed. Very interesting outcome indeed as we head into our main event of the evening. Baron Corbin will go it alone. The DCC won't accompany him to ringside. Maybe this is Corbin's chance to prove himself on his own as he takes on Samoa Joe. This is going to be a good one. These two guys, heavy hitters, heavy fighters, and guys who will not try and stay down just for the sake of it. Guys who will get up every chance they can and keep on inflicting pain into one another. Corbin joined the DCC, of course, at Survivor Series, was revealed as the newest member then and there. 
He's had some decent success since arriving. Quarterfinals, was it? Of the... No, he got eliminated in Venice. Did he get eliminated? No. Quarterfinals of the WWE Championship Tournament. Some good success in Survivor Series as well. He's been working alongside the DCC, assisting the leader in Chris Sabin. But now it's a chance for Baron Corbin to take care of his own business. It's a chance for him to go up against Samoa Joe by himself here. Joe, of course, who will face Brock Lesnar for the WWE title this Sunday in the only normal match of the card. And I said it earlier. The main reason why that's the case is that this is the only match in which we're going to get a fight either way. You could say it's a, it's a knockout match and they'll fight. You could say it's a submission match and they'll fight. At the end of the day, you're not getting away from the fact that these two guys are going to fight. So, you know, if maybe you want to protect a pair of them and make sure that they do actually have a career following this match, maybe putting some rules in place might be a good idea. I don't condemn that idea. I don't condemn that plan. Put some rules in place. Make sure that you're... The two of your biggest names on this roster are going to come out of Extreme Rules with their legs still attached to their bodies. Joe, I think it's a sensible idea. Whatever the case is, we're going to be getting an absolutely thrilling contest for the WWE Championship. It's going to be a match that you will not want to miss, even remotely. It's going to be something that, in the midst of all these personal matches, all these heated matches, all these rivalries that have been brewing in the midst of Corrin versus Okada in the main event. It's just two guys punching each other in the face until the other one stays down. That's all that it is. And on a card like Extreme Rules, that fits perfectly. That fits perfectly. These guys are going to beat the sn they're going to beat the shit out of each other until one doesn't get back up to their feet. That is it. Maybe they could have made it a knockout match. Yeah, maybe. But I think there's that something more rewarding about pinning your opponent, especially pinning Brock Lesnar for the WWE title. Samoa Joe says he wants to be a fighting champion week in and week out on SmackDown Live. We'll see if that'll be the case or not. If he walks out with that WWE title this Sunday. Nasty smack there by Joe as he's rolling away here with the strikes on Corbin. Whether the lone wolf is able to bring out the counter there. Look at this, just stomping down on Joe. Kind of put him in his place in the early goings. Baron Corbin here, I believe, has the slight weight advantage, but only slight, maybe 10 pounds in it, which at the size that these two guys are at is it's not really that much at all. In fact, it's basically null. But Corbin has that cocky side to him. He has that egotistical side to his offense. He fires up his opponents. He he keeps them down on the mat, whereas Joe likes them up on their feet. He likes them trying to fight him. And so if, you, if Corbin can keep Joe down on the mat, that's going to fire up Joe. But then if you fire up Joe, Lesnar and Corbin are going to see what Joe is all about as we prepare for that huge contest between those two come Sunday. Stream Rules is gearing up to be a great pay-per-view. There's no doubt about it. Both in a... A case of a SmackDown pay-per-view. And, of course, that main event. It's, it, it, the way that it looks is it's basically a SmackDown pay-per-view up until that main event. And at that point, that main event just becomes Corrin versus Okada. It has eclipsed being about a brand. is eclipsed almost being about this universe. It's two guys who despise one another. And they will do so until the end of time. But Corrin could end Okada's career this Sunday. It could be Okada's clock striking 12 at Extreme Rules. I'll save what I have to say about that until the actual pay-per-view event itself this Sunday. I think I've done all that I can to convince you that you need to watch Extreme Rules this Sunday. The final big pay-per-view event before WrestleMania. Yes, we have King of the Ring. That's going to be a one-off special show that we have planned. Not going to be on the same... Uh, it's the same scale as Extreme Rules, Guilty as Charged, and especially not, of course, WrestleMania. 
Great back and forth from these two guys right now. They are just swinging at one another. They're trying to hit whatever big moves they can. Look at that flurry of strikes there by Joe. Two open-handed strikes there. Not slaps. They were palm strikes. Joe looking for a big boot. Caught by Corbin. Choke. Lifted. Spine buster. A lone wolf there. Taking care of business. Although Joe more than happy to return with a big boot in the face right there. Samoa Joe, Yuranagi slam, pulling it off with ease. As I imagine he will do exactly the same to Brock Lesnar come this Sunday, but Corbin not bowing down. Corbin not giving in. Saving Eliza from Corbin. These guys are just throwing everything at one another. Heavy punch in the face from Corbin. You know he didn't. You know he didn't open that hand. That was a close fish punch right into the face of Samoa Joe. But the Samoan submission machine will just move on right from it. Corbin could be looking to end things here though. End of days incoming. A huge upset win. Stopped. Right in its tracks by Joe there. Stopped him. Corner in Zaguri. Got all of it. Every last bit of it he got. Look at that counter by Corbin. Big lariat as well. Ah, this is... This is what I wanted to see. This is what I expected. Two guys just throwing everything at one another. Throwing caution to the wind and just refusing to let the other one get the win. Back and forth strikes from both men. Joe sends Corbin into the turnbuckle. I was thinking he might have planned a muscle buster, but it seems not. But this will definitely still hurt. Big... Buckle bomb, Joe, Joe, Kakina clutch, Kakina clutch is locked in, middle of the ring, Corbin is going to have to fight out of this in his own way, Joe with his arms wrapped around the throat, trying to choke him out, and he does so, Corbin has to tap, Joe wins, and if he taps out Lesnar this Sunday, there's a new WWE Champion in town. And his name is Samoa Joe. Joe, your winner, but oh! Here we go! Lesnar hits the ring. Let the fight begin before this Sunday. Lesnar, Joe, fighting right now. It was a fight right at the start there, but the Beast caught him off guard. The Beast with that heavy Irish whip has just completely done in Joe. And Brock Lesnar in control. Continuing from where the brawl finished off last week. Lesnar with his almighty message sent to Joe. F5, the WWE Champion plants him. You do not want to miss Extreme Rules.